Greetings, I've got a question about sin and I want to just uh, read the question to you. It's an interesting question and I'm sure, I'm sure this will bless all of you. It says, Hi Bertie, thanks for the word of grace. You explain sin as the human inability to preserve his life forever. Kindly also explain how the, that definition links up with other definitions of sin in the Bible. Um, and then he quotes Romans 14, 23, it says, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin, and 1 John 3, verse 4, sin is the transgression of the law. We also see sin as a noun and as a verb. Could you please clarify? Now, when we look at uh, the definition of sin I gave there, uh, you know, I just took sin in as pertaining to not being a partaker of the life of God not being a partaker of the life of God. So what I mean by that is that a human being doesn't have the ability to have immortality in the human body by his own works. When we look at uh, the uh, Christian concepts, we need to realize that our concept of sin has always been the transgression of a commandment, like uh, that, that one definition in 1 John there that says that sin is the transgression of the law, when we don't do the law. And, and the way we've looked at sin was there's 10 commandments here, and if I miss a commandment, I've transgressed the commandment, and now I am a sinner. Uh, but when we look at sin as the, the original Greek definition, it says, to miss the goal. So what was the goal of the law? The Bible, the, the, if we look at the goal of the law, the law was there to guide us to Christ so that we can have eternal life by Christ. So if we transgress the law, it would, all, it would be by not having eternal life. Uh, because the end goal of the law was to point us to Christ so that we can have eternal life. And um, what the law stood for was that we would love one another. So if we don't walk in love for one another, and that was what the law stood for, and we know that we cannot walk in love towards one another by trying to obey the law, but only by being one with God. So if we are not walking in that love, we are missing the goal that the law had, which was, so that, which was pointing us to a holy and righteous life. So even if we transgress the law, um, you know, it doesn't mean that that transgression of that law was, I didn't obey a command. It means that I am not partaking of what the law was intended for. And the law's intent for man was that man would live in love towards one another as a fruit of what God has come and established in Jesus Christ. So how does that definition link up with a definition where I'm saying that sin is not to, is the human ability to preserve his life forever? When we look at sin as the human inability, and I just want to say this, that definition that I've given, you don't find in the Greek or anything like that. What I, it is my conclusion of what sin is. So I see sin as not to have a share in the life of God. So if a human person doesn't have the ability to have his physical body never die, have eternal youth by his own power. Now since we don't have that, in a, since we have that inability, when we don't live in faith, we will find if we don't have that, if we don't live by the persuasion of our heart towards Jesus that God can bring forth that life in us, we are not partakers of that eternal life and that is sin. That is why whatsoever is not our faith is sin. Now, the scripture, just that scripture, you know, this will, to explain all these scriptures can take an hour, but I'm just going to try and shorten this. So first, let me just summarize what I've said, because it can sound confusing, but this is what I want to say. Um, it's a, sin is not defined just as transgressing a commandment, but sin is not to have a share in. That's what the Greek says, to miss the goal or miss the mark. So if a transgression of the law, sin is the transgression of the law. Now, what was the law standing for? The law was standing for that we would walk in love. If we don't walk in love, what then? Then we are transgressing. We are not 
uh, reaching the goal that the law had with man. But what man wanted to do was man wanted to reach the goal of the law, which was pointing to Jesus, which would give us eternal life for free. We wanted to have that life by obeying the law instead of believing on Jesus. Um, Jesus Christ is the end of the law. Jesus Christ is the object of the law. The Bible says that the, the law was a schoolmaster pointing us unto Christ. So what is the purpose of a schoolmaster? The purpose of the schoolmaster is to point you to Jesus. Like a normal schoolmaster, what would the purpose of the schoolmaster be? To educate you. Why? So that you can have a job. If you're not having a job, you are transgressing or not meeting the end goal on why school was there. That is what it's all about. So um, uh, uh, what I'm saying is that we don't have the ability to preserve our own life unto eternal life by our own works. And that means that we are not by human ability. We don't have, we are not, we will not reach the goal of eternal life. And then the question is, like I've already answered Romans 14 verse 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. But let me just mention that quickly. Whatsoever is not of the persuasion that God would bring forth eternal life in us is missing the goal. If you don't live by the persuasion Christ has put upon your heart to rely upon Him to give you eternal life, you're missing the goal. It is a sin. It is a sin in as a noun, like I've explained, it can also be a sin as a verb. One can cognitively, by the decision of your will, decide not to trust Jesus and try to have life by your own work. That would be the sin in the context of a verb. So if you look at the two verses there, Romans 14 verse 23, um, let me just read Romans 14 verse 23. I think I've got it here. It says here, do you have faith? Faith have it. Um, to yourself before God. Happy is he that condemns not himself in the thing which he allows. And he that doubts is damned if he eats, because he eats not of faith, for whatsoever of faith is sin. Now the context, the true context of this is actually that um, the condemnation in your own heart. He says, he basically says, listen man, live according to the persuasion in your own heart, otherwise you're going to feel guilty in your heart. You in your heart is going to see it as sin if you contradict your own belief. That is what it is. That's why we even find it today. You know, we find that we come to a place where uh, people can be under the law. And when we preach grace to them, they feel it is a sin to believe in grace. Why? Because it contradicts their belief. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So what they are not persuaded, if you not do what is your persuasion, it would be a sin unto you. So the context there is a sin unto you. In truth, it is also a sin if we are not trusting the Lord or believing in the Lord, for we are missing the goal that He has for us. And then eventually we will miss the goal of eternal life and we will enter eternal destruction. Amen.